Hello, welcome to another Open Philosophy video. I'm Dennis Polis. This video is about the mind and evolution. We're going to be discussing a number of ideas which call into question the naturalist account. Last time we saw that if naturalists are correct, that our intentions have no causal effects, that they're an epiphenomenon, then natural selection has no behavioral traction. That is to say, if our intentions can't cause behavior, then there is no way for natural selection to select the behavior that they do cause. It's as simple as that. The naturalist view of mind as an epiphenomenon is incompatible with their view that mind consciousness evolved. Of course, the view that intentionality has no causal effects is indefensible. I've talked many times about the experiments which show that our intentions can modify physical processes, but we don't need to appeal to anything that controversial. The very fact that we can talk about intentions shows that they're causal. If they were not causal, then they could not form any representations of themselves in the brain. Thus, the naturalist claim that intentions have no causal effects is contradicted by the very fact that they discuss intentions. So if our intentions do have causal efficacy, if they can cause behavior, then doesn't that give evolution the attraction it needs to evolve consciousness? Well, by itself it does it does undercut the argument that I made in the last video. The argument in the last video basically showed that naturalists are completely inconsistent in saying that intentions have no causal efficacy and at the same time that consciousness evolved. But remember that there are three principles that underpin evolution. The first is that we have to have unpredictable variations that are due to mutations. The second is that there needs to be natural selection to pick out variants which are more favorable. And the third principle is that what has been selected needs to be inheritable. So if we have random variation, natural selection, and inheritability, then we have the necessary conditions for evolution. In the last video, we saw that evolution could not work if our intentions had no causal efficacy. Now, let's ask another question. Can random mutations, can physical processes, evolve consciousness? Well, that depends on a very deep question. And that question is, is consciousness the result of some physical process? Does physics, together with the conditions which occur in the brain, entail consciousness? If it does, then it's possible that some mutation could result in conscious awareness. Physics is based on the formulation of physical facts. When we have all of the physical facts, we have everything on which physics could be based. So if it turns out that mental facts are in addition to physical facts, physics will be unable to predict mental facts. That means that physics will not imply consciousness. Here are some simple arguments that show physical facts do not entail mental facts. One argument deals with zombies. Philosophical zombies are unlike the zombies in Hollywood movies. Philosophical zombies are beings that look and act like normal human beings who talk and who act as we do, but which have nothing inside of them. They have no consciousness. They merely operate externally in the same way as normal human beings. If zombies are logically possible, and clearly they are in some world, then the same physical facts can give rise to different mental facts. We can have zombies that have no consciousness, but the same motions as we do, and we can have ourselves with the same motions as zombies, but with consciousness in addition. Thus, consciousness is logically independent of physical facts and can't be deduced from physics. Another argument concerns qualia. 
Qualia are the fields that we have when we perceive various kinds of things. When we perceive red, the internal sensation that we have is the quality of red. When we hear a musical chord, then the internal feel of that chord is the quality of it. Now, if we have all of the physical facts, the neurophysiology, which results from interacting with light and sound and so on, it still remains an open question of whether the feel of, let's say, red and of some chord in C minor is the same or different. This is not something which can be answered by physical observations. And so, again, mental facts are independent of physical facts. A third argument considers the difference in various modes of sensation. For example, it would be absurd to ask what color the smell of cinnamon is, or to ask how red sounds. Normal people don't hear red. So our different input modes, sights, sounds, uh, smells, and so on, result in different kinds of information. Information which is not reducible to other kinds of information. Does the smell of cinnamon is not reducible to a color? Because our information on consciousness comes to us from an internal perception, it is unlike any of the sensory data which provide us with physical facts. Thus, there is no more reason to expect that the information resulting from our internal perception of consciousness should re be reducible to physical facts which come to us through the external senses than there is to assume that cinnamon should be reducible to a particular set of sounds. Each step in physical evolution begins with a mutation. Something happens physically to a gene, and as a result of that, different behavior, different structures, or some other physical effect transpires which can then be tested by natural selection. However, since mental facts do not supervene on, are not a logical consequence of, physical facts. Physics does not allow us to deduce consciousness from a genetic mutation, and thus whatever it is that gives rise to consciousness is outside of the current theory of evolution.